Hey guys, welcome back to Chris's Habs Corner. <clears throat> the news is here, baby. The big news we've all been waiting for is finally here. Everybody can take a deep breath and relax. Cole Caulfield is a Montreal Canadian for the next eight years. Locked in today. The news finally came out this morning. I woke up, saw on my cell phone, Caulfield had signed an eight-year contract extension worth $62.8 million and an annual average value of $7.85 million, baby. Let's go. Let's dive right into it. <clears throat> so I'm going to be making this just a quick initial reaction video. You know, my first thoughts on this are it's under Nick Suzuki's contract by uh, two or $300,000, which is good, which is all, what we all wanted, right? <clears throat> it's not a bridge deal. It's a long-term deal. He is going to be with us for eight seasons, guys. That's a long time. Um, mostly positive thoughts on that. Um, you know, preferably I would have maybe I'd like to seen the bridge deal. But either way, I'm not complaining because at the end of the day, the only thing that really matters is getting him locked up. Um, <clears throat> you know, I would have liked to have seen the bridge deal only because of the shoulder surgery. You know, uh, as a precautionary reason for over the next couple of seasons but at the end of the day i don't really think it's that big of an issue at all and you know what uh look guys he's cole caulfield it's not going to affect him that much i mean he was seen in tiktok videos and instagram videos playing tennis this summer with that shoulder after the surgery it looks like he's fully recovered knock on wood um you know i just think that <clears throat> having been there over the past couple of seasons, um, you know, he's one of the starting foundation pillars of this rebuild. Uh, he's, he was there in the 21-2022 season, like the god-awful season. He was here with us last year. Uh, I just could not imagine him uh, not being a part of when this team takes that evolving step towards a playoff team, you know. Uh, he's one of the iconic logos you think of, of the Montreal Canadiens making their next playoff run. He's in that Mount Rushmore pillar image of, uh, you know, staple players on this team, right? My God, I, uh, I'm i just I'm ecstatic right now. Um, I'm just finally glad the deal got done. Uh, we all knew it was going to get done. We knew he wasn't going to go into considering offer sheets or free agency or anything like that. Um, we knew it was just a little bickering back and forth between the management and Caulfield's agent over the number. Um, you know, we all knew all along Caulfield wanted to be here. We all knew that him sticking around uh, with the club after his shoulder surgery and just staying with the team, staying in the city for the rest of the season. Uh, I see him around, you know, wearing the logo all the time and stuff. You knew he was going to stick around. Um, you know, you knew that <coughs> even... I mean, yeah, even after he just stuck around, he wanted to be here. And you know what? Aside from all that, what no one's really said a lot is that Martin St. Louis is his type of coach, right? <laughs> St. Louis was a small player, uh, had to really fight his way into the league and prove himself uh, because of his size, right? And to really have that willpower and have that extra gear um, offensively to really prove his worth in this league. And so, you know, Caulfield's kind of in that same ballpark size-wise. Um, so, I mean, Martin St. Louis kind of molded to Caulfield's mindset, I guess, more so than other players' mindsets. And I think that that is something Caulfield really likes and really feels comfortable being coached under. And I think that that's a valuable, um, <clears throat> I guess, argumentative piece as to why he wanted to stay here. Uh, aside from that, I still think he would have stayed here anyways, but I think that's a big, massive factor, right? And just the fact that he's going to be with Nick Suzuki for at least guaranteed seven of the next eight seasons. I mean, those two already have so much continuity and just so much understanding and chemistry playing together, uh, understanding each other's pace, on predicting what each other's going to do on the ice all the time. Uh, I can only imagine how much more that's going to grow and just how molded to each other they're really going to be on the ice uh even you know two to three years from now imagine what they're going to be like in seven years from now uh together you know um 
and just having him locked up, um, you know, Cole Caulfield locked up like this. Now when we go into the draft, guys, and we get whatever top five player we're going to get, hopefully, um, you know, a superstar centerman, uh, just a high-octane, high-offensive threat, that is going to open up so much space and time for Cole Caulfield on the ice offensively uh, down the road, right? If you're thinking longevity in a few years from now, uh, whether it's Mitch Cobb or Smith or Leo Carlson or even Benson or Leonard, uh, those guys are really going to boost um, freeing up Caulfield in the offensive zone. I mean, the huge Caulfield was already on pace to score 45, maybe 50 goals this year. Imagine what he's going to be like if a guy like Mitch Cobb's on the ice on the same line with him. Um, or, you know, on the power play, yeah, my God, if you have another high-octane threat coming in from the draft this year uh, and you put him on the same power play as Caulfield, you're not going to be able to guard both of them, right? You're not going to be able to take away both passing lanes and passing options. You're going to have to pick your poison. <clears throat> I mean, so that's it. Yeah, um, he did not end up scoring the 45 to 50 goals over the last season. But he was clearly on pace, and anybody that's worried about that or anybody that's made comments as to, oh, well, he didn't actually complete the season, he didn't actually score 45 goals, he was well on his way to doing so. And he had to be dragged off the ice to be forced into the surgery. He didn't want to He didn't want to leave the midway through the season, guys. I remember the training staff was ordered by management to take his hockey sticks away and his hockey bags. Um the day he was told he's getting shoulder surgery so that he wouldn't go on the ice for practice. Uh, he wants to play, you know. He has that that beast nature in him to just hit the ice. Um, and he was well on his way with 26 goals, 10 assists last season to hit in 45. You know, he was still tied with Nick Suzuki for the goals led last year. And do you guys realize he has 53 goals and 31 assists since his 2019 draft? He's second in his draft class, only, draft class only behind... Uh, Jack Hughes, guys, like that is just wild. I mean, I'm just ecstatic about this, you know. I mean, Caulfield really is a player that has just proven that the league has evolved over the past decade or so of players coming in that are small that can thrive because the game has evolved into much more, a much more smarter, a much more mentally if you have the mental wits and you can play the chess pieces uh, a lot faster than bigger players, you can, with some skill added into it, you can uh, thrive in the NHL with a, with a small stature, right? Um, you know, Coffey always seems to know how to escape pressure with the puck, knows how to be slippery and just get through. Uh, always seems to find the open, quiet ice to step ahead of the play and just be in those high-threat scoring areas. And, it, and to just be a pure finisher, just to be a pure goal scorer and a pure finisher, uh, it's great to see a smaller player like him just prove that you can thrive in this league at that size. And, man, to get him at only $7.8 million, and everybody was worried it was going to be north of $8 million, north of $9 million, uh, that's, that's, a, you know, that's a steal in the long run. <laughs> because, yeah, I do want the bridge deal uh, for, you know, that shoulder surgery reason, but what if he scored 50 goals next season and then the season after? Uh, that 7 million turns into 11 or 12 million a year after that, right? So now we get him locked up for eight years at 7.85 million. That's that's a good thing, guys. That's a really good thing uh, in the long run. It's going to be a good investment to save us some cap space money. Um, I'm not complaining about that. And I don't really think Cole Cotton is complaining about it. I think he genuinely wanted to be with this team and this organization long term because he loves the city, he loves the logo, and he loves the organization. You could just see it on his face and his expressions, right? In all of his uh, social media images and pictures. So that's my quick reaction on this. Take a deep breath, guys. Cole Caulfield is a Montreal Canadian for the next eight years. Rejoice this moment today and stop worrying. Go ahead to go.